beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, rabbits. You name it. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, chicken. Welcome everybody to part two of Dave's Corner. I know I promised it and I'm delivering. Um, in the first part it was all about news and that's why it took so long so I had to break it into two parts. This is all going to be about reviews. My name is Dave D. Saint. I'm here with Dave's Corner. Unfortunately my special guest who was my special guest and now is going to be my, my co-host. JV couldn't be here. He wouldn't make much sense to actually be here since he hasn't seen the movies. I have, so I'm going to deliver the reviews. All right? Um, as we are speaking, Black Friday is on in, in, in session. The stores are packed. It's disgusting out there. By the way, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we just passed a beautiful Thanksgiving. I went down to the Macy's Day Parade, and I will put my video here so you guys can enjoy what I went through. All right? Let's get to it. All right, without further ado, we're going to the first movie review of the, the, the review. Um, and it is Do Stephen King's sequel to The Shining, um, named Dr. Sleep. Now, I was a fan of The Shining. Uh, I read the novel. And as a matter of fact, at the moment, I'm still reading Dr. Sleep. I had to go see the movie. The movie was stupendous. I fell in love with the movie from the beginning to the end. It just had me by the heart. Now, um, the movie received wonderful reviews. It was one of those movies that I was stupefied. I thought it was going to hit it big. Unfortunately, it did not hit it big in the theaters. And it flopped. Along with Terminator Dark Fate. Along with... I'll, I'll name the other one that, that flopped. Um, but people aren't watching these movies. I don't know why. I guess they're. I guess the movie theaters are too expensive. Whatever the case may be, I don't know. But I just want to let you know that Doctor Sleep is a definite must watch. Um, if you've seen The Shining with Jack Nicholson, um, then it's very closely related, very closely connected. Stephen King actually approved of this movie. It is side by side a mirror image of the book. Um, it is it is based on Daniel uh, Torrance, who is actually growing up. If you, see, if you remember him in The Shining, he was the little boy um, that survived the hotel. Um, and in this one, he's all grown up and he's followed in his father's footsteps. Um, unfortunately, his shining, it, which is his power, has kind of gone dim until he meets this new girl named Abra, who um, helps him rekindle his uh, shining power and helps him. Uh, and he's able to help her within this adventure or of, of per se. Um, there is this uh, opposing group called the Chunat who are kind of like uh, uh, shining vampires. They like to suck out the shining off of supernatural people with this gift. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, the movie should have done what it was supposed to do. It didn't hit it as big as we thought it would, or at least I thought it would. I had seen the movie twice in the theaters. Uh, if you, if, if you want to go see a good movie it's not a horror it's a thriller if you want to see a good movie you want to see a good time go watch the movie in the theaters if not then uh, I, I definitely recommend it to watch it with a loved one of age not you know younger or under 16 or anything like that because it has um, strong scenes at certain points but I definitely recommend it it was a great movie two thumbs up for me Second movie that I want to review, um, it is based on a popular 70s TV show. Um, later on in the early uh, millennium, they rebooted the TV show and they made it into a movie called uh, Charlie's Angels with uh, Lucy Liu, uh, Drew Barrymore, and Cameron Diaz. The movie did so good in the theaters, they followed up with a sequel called Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. At that point, I guess they didn't do so well, but um, maybe they did. I don't know. I haven't really counted the numbers. But um, I guess they decided they waited a few years just to reboot it with uh, Elizabeth Banks helming the director's chair and um, Kirsten Stewart, um, uh, Naomi Scott, and a new actress that I honestly don't remember her name because she hasn't really done anything big. But I watched the movie, honestly to tell you the truth, it's one of those movies where it's just like, why did they do this? It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Nobody. It, it's one of those movies that it's like, okay... You're just trying to recycle stuff that has already been done. 
Um, the movie has received horrible reviews. It's actually known as one of the biggest flops out there. Not compared to Dark Fate, Terminator Dark Fate, but Terminator Dark Fate, um, Doctor Sleep, and uh, Charlie's Angels has been three of the biggest flops of this year, which is pretty bad because um, these movies should have been, they, they were made with so much oomph, especially um, Doctor Sleep. That was actually a really good movie. Terminator Dark Fate, we all know what happened with that. Charlie's Angels reboot that just failed, fall, fell apart. <clears throat> um, it's a girl movie. I guess a lot of girls would go see it and think that, oh my, girl, girl power and all that stuff, but it could have been done a lot better, honestly. Um, Elizabeth Banks is pretty much the only real face in that movie, and she's not really that much star power. Kirsten Stewart, her fame died with Twilight. I don't know. She's not really that good of an actress. Naomi Scott, she only has two things that she's done that have been big budget things, which was Power Rangers, which was a flop, um, and Aladdin, which was really, it was a good Disney movie, but unfortunately, it, it wasn't at all about her, you know? Yeah, she did a, something good in the movie, but it wasn't, like, she, she was the first, you know, back in the cartoon movie, she really didn't have a say in anything, but in this movie, she decided, she in Aladdin, the live-action movie, she decided that she wasn't going to stay quiet. She had a whole single, uh, a whole single song, which was about women empowerment, but that movie didn't really put her out there. It was Will Smith, pretty much. But Charlie's Angels, I gotta say... If you want to go watch it, hey, that's on your dime. But honestly, I give it a thumb down and probably a thumb up because it had its action moments, but it really wasn't really too good. It was horrible CGI, but whatever. Third movie that I'm going to talk about was, to me, one of the biggest... It was a flop. It was definitely a flop, but it was so good. It's based on a popular song... That was sung by, um, geez, I forgot his name. Uh, 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 he was in the Wham. But I'll, I'll put his name up here somewhere. Um, it was a great film. It was based on that song called Last Christmas. It starred uh, Emilia Clark, and it was about a girl who was pretty much a mess up. It was a she. I I was so surprised to see that she was so comedic in this film. And the story, like, it really fooled the crap out of me. I honestly thought that she was in this situation just to come up, come to find out that it was really, like, a whole different situation going on. It just blew my mind, but it was such a good movie. I personally think that the reason why it flopped was because there was not too much, um, um, you know, I guess too much publicity for this film. It wasn't one of those big movies that everybody was like, oh my god, I gotta go see another Avengers. But the movie was really, really good. So, um, being that it's Christmas time, if you want to go with a loved one, maybe take your family, because this is actually kind of a family movie. Um, Last Christmas is a definite choice. If not, then definitely um, when it comes out on ne uh, um, Netflix or, or Hulu or whatever the case may be, rent it. It's a definite funny movie. So definitely check it out. I recommend it. Emilia Clark won't ever get to the peak of what she was when she was in Game of Thrones. But you know what? She can keep trying. I mean, she failed in Terminator Genesis, failed in Hutton Solo. And now, last Christmas, but I think she's definitely got something. So, I mean, definitely a shot, give it. Next film on my list is a movie by the name of Ford vs. Ferrari. Now, if you know me, and I've already said in my past reviews, that I'm the type of person that I like to do my research on certain things. And since I knew that this movie was based on actual events, I actually went into the YouTube and I started to look up the whole history behind Ford vs. Ferrari. And I learned a lot of stuff about it, so I actually knew what was going to happen. Before I saw this movie, um, they decided to base this movie on the character of Christian Bale and the character of Matt Damon. How Matt Damon was working for um, Henry Ford and um, uh, Christian Bale was his driver and his mechanic also. So um, they go through this adventure where um, uh, Christian Bale is like uh, the, 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 the bad seed of the bunch. And um, Henry Ford and his people don't want no association with him. But that Matt Damon knows that he's the best driver and he's the best mechanic for the job. And they need to make uh, Ford faster than Ferrari so they can get into the, um, the, the, the race that this eventually they have. 
So they get into the nitty gritty and they start building this thing, this contraption throughout the whole thing with a whole bunch of, of opposing forces against the character of Christian Bale. I don't want to reveal too much because this is one of those movies that you just have to sit down and watch and you will definitely have a great time, especially if you're into cars, just to see how these cars evolve throughout the, 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 the movie and just the comedy behind it. It was such a great film. I honestly think that this might be Academy or Oscar award worthy. Uh, I think Oscar and I think the Oscar award and the Academy award are the same thing, but I think this might be up there for something like that. So um, I'm definitely recommending it. If you haven't seen it yet, go to the theater and go watch it. If you want to sit down and actually have a movie, you know, have it embedded in your head and see a history, go ahead. It's a great movie. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend it. Two thumbs up. Next film that I want to talk about is a movie that was um, shockingly the most horrible film that I have seen this year. Honestly, I don't know what's possessing John Cena to do these movies. But just like Vin Diesel did The Pacifier and that ruined his career, I'm thinking John Cena is trying to do the exact same thing. They aren't Arnold Schwarzenegger. Only Arnold was able to manage action films and manage comedies and sci-fis and all that stuff and actually have it be big budget films. No, John Cena cannot do it. He's too too young um too young in the movies in the movie business. I mean, Bumblebee, honestly to tell you the truth, it wasn't John Cena's acting that saved that movie. Uh but um uh, honestly John Cena needs to go back to school of acting and learn how to act, but this movie was so bad. It was about a group of of uh, uh, um firemen that they're they're called uh jumpers or something like that and they jump into um like forests that are burning and they help um, stop these fires. I don't know the exact term, but I'm going to look it up and I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, so in the midst of stopping one of these fires, they find these kids and they become sort of babysitters. Some of these jokes were kind of forced. They were kind of like, um, they, they were, they were not needed. And, um, this love story was really pathetic. It felt like it was just kind of rushed. And, um, just to tell you the truth, everything about this film was just screamed like, horribleness but then again it wasn't geared toward adults it was geared toward children and I guess that's why they get all these little um, um, little jokes that just really don't make sense and really you don't really care to watch it so um, the the reviews were horrible for it I, I haven't even seen the numbers yet if it actually has made anything but it came out, I give it two thumbs down. If you have kids and you want to see your kids laugh a little bit while you're bored out of your mind, go watch it. Or better yet, just wait, get rented on Redbox when it comes out or watch it on Netflix or Hulu or whatever the case may be. But honestly, it wasn't a good movie for me. I don't know if it would be a good movie for you. So with that, I end my combo. And my final movie of the evening. It is a little movie based on the the I believe it was the World World War Two. I did like again. I did my research on this. Um, this this movie was based on something that came after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Um, they had a couple of other uh, um, uh, war sequences in the film. They had different battles, and then they ended up in Midway, and that's where and that's what the movie's about. Uh, the name is called the movie's called Midway, and it's about the battle on Midway. And the reason why it's called the battle on Midway is because the Americans finally got a win against the, J the Japanese. Um, they were able to sink four of their naval ships, and um, we won. Uh, but the whole movie was um, what was his name? Um, Roland Emmerich's uh, love piece, so he was um, obsessed with doing this movie, so he literally funded it out of his own pocket, and um, honestly, it looks like it, because the CGI was, uh, I think the CGI was terrible, um, and some of these actors just didn't fit the roles, uh, it was full of so many big name actors, but the movie just felt like it was forced, it didn't feel like it was something that you know, I, I, I remember reading and seeing videos on a lot of these veterans who actually went to go see it and they cried because this is stuff that they went through. But for me, it was just, for uh, I'm, a, I'm an avid movie watcher, and for me to sit down and watch this movie, it just felt like it was just not what 
could have been like honestly it just felt like it was forced the movie did everything about the story it was just complicated it was a complicated mess and I read in the reviews that it was so it was mixed reviews some people liked it some people didn't honestly to tell you the truth I didn't um and a movie that's coming out that I actually want to see that looks pretty interesting is 1912 which is it's crazy how these movies are coming out back to back uh, but uh Midway was definitely not my recommendation if you want to go see it i believe there's still certain theaters still showing it i know it was a little older but um i needed to do my review on it um if, if if by chance if you haven't seen it and you're still interested in it again netflix hulu shameless plug for all these things um you could go on redbox whatever the case may be or just go on bootleg and watch it it's out there um but yeah enjoy it if you if you want to watch a war epic this has been Dave the Saint from Dave's Corner. This has been my movie review list. Um, I will be coming out shortly with a new video. I, I know that I've been promising you guys that I'll be doing uh, Dave's book report. It is on the way. Um, I just got caught up with work and so many different things. And in my next movie, uh, my movie review and movie news, uh, JV will be back. We will be talking. We'll be getting back, like I said, the neat and gritty. Um, but we will be talking about upcoming stuff. Um, but um, yeah, uh, this has been Dave D. Saint. Happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe out there. Do not get crazy shopping on Black Friday. And I will be seeing you next time.